Hi, I'm Ivor Benjamin, a cardiovascular scientist, physician, and volunteer for the American Heart Association. Congratulations on your AHA Research Award. Like you, I was delighted when I received my first award from the American Heart Association over 25 years ago. You are successful because you were able to tell your story to other scientists. But to make your experience with the American Heart Association not only enjoyable, but a lifelong relationship, you will have to undertake the biggest obstacle, which is to tell your story, especially to non-scientists, in a way that they can understand. So sit back and watch, then grab a friend and start practicing. Good luck. Hi, my name is Georgia Papavasiliu, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at the Illinois Institute of Technology. I have an American Heart Association Innovative Research Award to study controlled peptide co-delivery from hydrogel nanoparticle matrices for therapeutic neovascularization of ischemic tissue. Important work, isn't it? Too bad nobody outside of our world knows what I'm talking about. As you know, the training we receive as scientists prepares us well to communicate with precision about our work, so long as we're talking to other scientists. Very few people outside of our bubble can understand what I just said, not my family, friends, even some colleagues, and that's a problem. Unless I can talk about my research in a way that everybody can relate to, they're probably not going to care about it. My guess is you're struggling with this too. So here are a few tips and an exercise to help you get better at talking about your science with the non-scientists in your life. First of all, remember that when you are talking about your research, you're telling a story and you need to tailor that story for your specific audience, family member, a donor, a group of sixth grade students. Ask yourself, what matters to them? Why should they care? Don't use jargon and don't bury your lead. Keep your story to three main points since it's easy to remember things in threes. Number one, start in the action. What is the work I'm actually doing? Number two, why? What is the urgent problem I'm trying to solve? And number three, this is what the future will look like for patients and their loved ones if I'm successful. Probably the most important thing you can do to improve is to practice and do it live with someone who is not a scientist because the experience of getting real world feedback is incredibly valuable. Let me show you an easy way to get started. I'm going to explain my research to a layperson in about 90 seconds. This project focuses on developing a novel, alternative, non-invasive treatment for patients diagnosed with advanced stages of critical limb ischemia. Critical limb ischemia is a chronic condition that results in severe pain of the lower extremities, in sores and wounds that don't heal, and in severe cases, in limb amputation due to poor blood circulation and lack of blood flow in these regions. Current treatments involving invasive or surgical procedures are not an option for those with advanced forms of the disease due to associated comorbidities. Non-invasive or non-surgical approaches are not even currently available for treating this disease. This project focuses on developing hydrogel nanoparticles that will provide sustained and controlled delivery of proangiogenic and vessel stabilizing peptides to promote rapid and stable neovascularization of ischemic tissues in animal models of hind limb ischemia. The goal is for the nanoparticles to provide sustained release of therapeutic peptides in order to induce new blood vessels to form to restore blood flow at the ischemic limb upon injection. We hope that the nanoparticles will reach the target site and provide sustained and prolonged release of the peptides at just the right dose and over a time frame that is sufficient for the growth of new blood vessels. If successful, this work will improve the healthcare and the quality of life for patients with advanced forms of this disease. Wow, I got the part about sores not healing and possible amputation, but there's so many words in there that I don't really understand. What is a peptide or nanoparticle or ischemia? I have no idea what that is. Help me out here. Okay, I'm going to try this again, but this time in 60 seconds. My research focuses on developing an alternative treatment for patients that are not candidates for surgery 
who are affected by a disease known as critical limb ischemia. This is an advanced form of peripheral arterial disease, which involves narrowing of the peripheral arteries, most commonly those in the legs, due to plaque buildup, which reduces blood flow. In severe cases, this leads to extensive blockage in the arteries, preventing blood from getting to the lower extremities. This results in foot pain at rest, in slow healing ulcers, and if not treated promptly, in limb amputation. While some patients can be treated with invasive procedures, these treatments are not an option for approximately one-third of the population that has developed the disease. To address this issue in a different way, our research aims to restore the blood supply to the affected limb by encouraging new blood vessels to form around the blockage and into the oxygen-starved sites. We are developing drug-loaded particles that can be injected directly into the affected area to provide controlled release of the drug at just the right dose and over a time frame that is sufficient for new blood vessels to grow. Okay, I'm almost there. Plaque buildup, what is this again? And lower extremities, what are these? And why can't a third of the population just have surgery? One more time, and now I have just 30 seconds to convey the most important points. We are looking for new treatments for patients who have critically reduced blood flow in the legs, a disease known as critical limb ischemia, these patients may have diabetes or other complications that make surgery too risky. This disease results in blockage in the arteries that keeps blood flow from getting into the legs and feet. This can cause foot pain at rest, slow healing ulcers, and in the worst case, amputation of the foot or lower leg. We are looking at creative ways to get new blood vessels to form, bypassing the blockage, and restoring normal blood flow. We are developing an injection which slowly releases drugs that will get new blood vessels to grow. As you can imagine, this would greatly improve the quality of life for these patients. Okay, so I think I get it now. Instead of surgery, these people can receive a shot that you're working on that will increase blood flow to their legs and their feet, and they won't have to worry about possible amputation. This is huge. As you can see, practice and feedback are key. And the more you do it, the better you'll get. Good luck.